There is one story that has touched more important minds in Western history than any other. It influenced everyone from Churchill to Napoleon, from Caesar to Alexander, and pretty much everyone else you've ever heard of in European history. It is the single most important work in Greek mythology, and together with the Bible, the most important work in Western culture. It's Homer's Iliad. For a story about war, Ares, the god of war, doesn't actually appear that much in the Iliad. But his personality and his attributes are exactly what the Iliad is all about. The Iliad is a complex epic with several important themes, of which one is unmistakably linked to Ares, menace or rage. It is in fact the very first word of the Iliad, and it refers to the rage of Achilles. Achilles is the greatest of the Greek heroes, the ultimate warrior, a man destined for eternal glory. He much resembles the god of war himself, powerful, beautiful and full of rage. Homer starts his epic well into the Trojan War. The fight over the apple, the judgment of the fairest goddess and Paris stealing Helen are expected to be known to every civilized Greek. The Iliad opens with Agamemnon disrespecting Achilles, who then refuses to fight any longer. This sulky and petty anger is the first form of rage that defines Achilles throughout the story. With their greatest hero sidelined, the Greeks risk losing the war with many falling at the hands of the Trojans. Despite much pleading by his fellow kings, Achilles is consumed by his rage and refuses to rejoin the battle. That all changes when Patroclus, Achilles' boyfriend, or his cousin if you have Hollywood sensibilities, is killed in battle by the Trojan hero Hector. The death of his beloved Patroclus unleashes an uncontrollable bloodthirsty rage in Achilles that brings him straight back to the battle. Achilles' grief turns him almost into Ares himself, raging across the battlefield, killing everyone that comes in his path, battling even the immortal gods themselves to quench his thirst for revenge. Eventually, he kills Hector, but the rage of Ares does not leave Achilles. Fueled by his anger, he ignores the sacred Greek funeral rites. Instead, he dishonors the body by dragging it behind his chariot around Troy's mighty walls, each night and for all to see. But even this horrendous act of hubris does nothing to calm his fury. After several nights of this gruesome spectacle, Hector's father Priam, king of Troy, cannot stand it any longer. In the middle of the night, the old king sneaks behind enemy lines, into the Greek camp and into Achilles' tent. In a tragic scene, Priam kisses the hands that murdered his son and begs for the body of Hector to give him a proper burial. Achilles sees before him an old man, broken by the same grief that he himself feels for Patroclus. They are both moved to tears and Achilles allows Priam to take the body home and hold the funeral. It is because of this act of pity, of humanity, that the rage of Ares finally leaves Achilles. Thus held they a funeral for Hector, tamer of horses. This is where the Iliad ends. The famous Trojan horse and the sack of Troy in which finally both Priam and Achilles come to their ends are not part of the story. The Iliad is not about the glorious victory, it's about the nature of war. It shows that no matter how glorious war may be, it is above all a tragedy. Achilles personifies this more than any other human. He may be the most glorious hero, but he is also a tragic character, consumed by war. The god of war is likewise a tragic character. Ares' personality with all the bloodthirst and the rage is rather unlikable, and most Greeks saw Ares as something of a necessary evil. Except for the nations that identified strongly with warfare, like the Spartans, who honoured Ares as their patron god, an example to them all. As did the Romans with their version of Ares, Mars. But to be fair on the Romans, Mars was a more sophisticated god than Ares, representing not just bloodthirst, but war in all its forms. In Greece, however, Ares shared the job of god of war with his sister, Athena, who presides over the defensive and strategic war. Ares embodies only the aggressor, the bloodthirst of the fight the blind fury that drives Achilles throughout the Iliad. Even the Olympians, including his own parents, despise Ares for what he is. In the Iliad, Zeus tells his wounded son, To me you are the most hateful of all the gods, forever quarrelling is dear to your heart, wars and battles. Aphrodite, goddess of love, is the only Olympian who doesn't hate Ares. She finds there is something irresistibly sexy about him. The Olympian opinion of Ares represents our own stance to war. For the most part, we dislike war, all the suffering and death, but there is a bit of Aphrodite in all of us, and we find something fascinating, irresistible and glorious about it. The end of the Iliad is a starting point for several other great works of the ancient world, Homer's Odyssey, Aeschylus' Oresteia and Virgil's Aeneid. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel, and why not become our patron to help us make more videos in the future.